A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Gentlemen, it's time. Today we are going to answer the age-old question. When is the square root of x of the square root of x of the square root of x equal to 69? Try it out and keep watching the video for the solution. Once you're done, okay. Um, also, write your answer down there into the comments. And this little question will lead us down a nice little mathematical rabbit hole. So keep watching for the entirety of the mathematical um, wonderland that I'm going to present to you today. By the way, thanks to all of my patrons for helping keep the channel alive. So if you want to support the course too, check out my Patreon. Link down there at the top of the description. And now we are going to dive right in. So, um, how would you approach a problem like this? Well, um, if you are a student, you might think, well, I could take the square on both sides and get rid of the square root. But then we are going to run into the problem, obviously, that we still have x here and other x terms here. And if you then square once again, it's not going to end up with something nice, for example, because then you have x squared times um, x and so on. This could be one method to approach the whole problem, but I would like to go um, at it from a different perspective for what we are going to do later during the video. I would like to rewrite the square root as being to the one half power. So we can equivalently rewrite this as 69 being equal to. So always put parentheses. This right here is our outer square root to the one half power. Then we have the next square root part. X times blah, blah, blah to the one half power. And then we have the inner square root, which is x to the one half power. This is what we got right here. I'm going to bring the one half to the side of this one, um, just to keep the notation uh, nice and fluent here. And this is what our problem looks like um, written differently. And now we are going to start from the inside by using exponentiation rules. What you are going to notice is that if we have x to the one half power and multiply it by x, this is like adding the exponents together with the same base. So the inner part that we get right here is x to the first power times x to the one half power is x to the one plus one half, which is the same as 1.5 or 3 over 2. So this inner part is nothing other than x to the 3 over 2. But now what we're going to do is we are going to use the square root, so the one half power on this inner argument because it's in parentheses. Meaning if we have the exponentiation of something with an exponent, what we do is we just multiply those exponents together. So one half times three over two is the same as three over four. So what we end up with is x times x to the three over four and all of this to the one half power. So what we got here is an expression right now for the root of x of the root of x, which is nothing other than x to the 3 over 4. So keep this in mind, okay? So square root of x of the square root of x is the same as x to the 3 over 4. And obviously just the square root of x is the same as x to the 1 half power. We already established that. Now we're going to go through the same process once again. Adding the exponents on the inner part together is going to leave us with x to the first power plus 3 over 4, which is the same as 7 over 4, so x to the 7 over 4. And now if we exponentiate this exponential, we have 7 over 4 times 1 half is 7 over 8. So we can rewrite our original problem as 69 being equal to x to the 7 over 8. Now, in order for us to solve for x, what we do is we exponentiate both sides to the 8 divided by 7th power. Once we do that, we get multiplication here by the exponentiation rules of 7 over 8 times 8 over 7, which is just 1, x to the first power. And on the other side, we get 69 to the 8 over 7th power. So our original problem yields that x is equal to 69 to the um, 8 over 7, which is certainly something, okay? Uh, I would like to rewrite this a tiny little bit more. Um, and this is going to become Im important later. Um, if we rewrite this a tiny little bit more, you're going to notice that 8 over 7 is the same as um, one whole thing and 1 seven. So this is the same as 69 to the 1 plus 1 over 7. If we break this up by making use of the exponentiation rules, this is what we did here, but just in reverse, 
we are going to get 69 to the first power, which is just 69 times, and then we have 69 to the one seventh, which by definition is the seventh root of 69. So the cool thing about this expression right here is that we are going to preserve our 69 and we are going to multiply it by, in this case, the seventh root of 69. Do we have the same thing here, kind of, if we solve, for example, this part right here. So we say that the square root of x times the square root of x is equal to 69. Let's rewrite our problem a tiny little bit. Then what we are going to do is we are going to rewrite it as x to the 3 over 4. And then what we are going to do is we are going to take the 4 over 3 power on both sides, giving us that x is equal to 69 to the 4 over 3. And by the same arguments that we had before, we can rewrite this as 69 times, and in our case, the third root, the cube root of 69. So we are going to preserve our 69 once again. Okay, and now what we are going to do is we are going to expand this a tiny little bit more. Now we went a step back and solved this one for 69. Now how about adding another square root of x to this whole thing? So the square root of x of the square root of x of the square root of x and so on. What you're going to notice is a certain recursive relationship here. If we add another square root of x around this whole thing, we have this expression right here in the middle, which we know about that this is going to yield x to the 7 over 8. So if we have this problem in mind here, what we are going to get is the square root of x times x to the 7 over 8. Now, once again, let us go through this process here. This right here in the square root as, as the radicum is going to yield that this is um, x to the, and now we have 15 over 8, and taking the square root is just like multiplying with 1 half, giving us over, uh, overall x to the 15 divided by 16. And if we set this equal to 69, what we are going to get, obviously, is if we take the 16th over 15th power, um, that x is equal to 69 to the 16 divided by 15, or in other words, by, by our logic here, if we apply our rules from before the 69 times, and in our case, the 15th root of 69. And here could go on. This right here is going to turn into a recursively defined sequence. If we define our square root of x as being the zero of member of the sequence, and we apply it to itself once again and again, we can get ourselves a sequence with n roots. And now we are going to make this a bit more abstract. So what is going to happen if we have the square root of x, of the square root of x, of dot dot dot, of the square root of x? Where we have the square root applied to itself n times. Let's try if we can uh, spot a certain pattern here. So what have we got up until now? The square root of x is x to the one half. The square root of x or square root of x is x to the 3 over 4. Next up is the square root of x of the square root of x of the square root of x is going to be 7 over 8. Do you notice something here? Next one would be 15 over 16. What you might notice here is the first thing, that our numerator is always one less than our denominator. So we always get x out, obviously. So this is something x to the and then we are going to get a negative 1 at the top of our fraction, because we have 1 less. Now what about our numerate, uh, our den denominator? Let's take a look at that. Here we get 2, we get 4. I, I think it's, it's pretty clear how this turns out. Then we get 8, then we get 16. Those are all powers of 2. How are the powers of 2 here? Well. If we have n being equal to 1, our first member, we get 2 to the first power, n being equal to 2, where n is the number of roots applied to itself, we get 2 squared, which is 4. 3 roots is going to give us 8, which is 2 to the third power. Meaning overall, if we make this more abstract, we are going to get in our sequence 2 to the nth power divided by 2 to the n, where we have a minus 1, obviously, up here in the um, numerator. And if we now set this equal to 69, for example, if we generalize this problem a little bit more, or any other constant actually, really doesn't matter here, solve for it, meaning our value for x in this abstract behavior is gonna be equal to um, 69 to the, 
And now we are going to have 2n, the reciprocal, divided by 2 to the n minus 1. And we could leave it at that. But don't forget what we did before. We extracted, I also have it up here, our 69 term from it. Can we do the same thing here? And yes, we can do so. If you have done a bunch of limits and a bit of algebra in terms of integrals and so on, you might notice something in this fraction right here. We kind of have the same numerator and denominator. The only thing that's keeping us from um, basically splitting up our fraction into two parts is that we don't have the same denominator that we need to split something up. We can solve this problem by adding a 1 and subtracting once again. This is adding 0 and 3 doesn't change anything. So subtracting 1 and adding 1 in the numerator doesn't change anything. But now we can break this whole thing up. Namely what we get is this first part with 2 to the n minus 1 divided by 2 to the n minus 1. Coincidentally, those are going to cancel out to 1, which is our 69 being preserved. So we are going to get x being equal to 69 times and our other term is going to be 69 to the 1 divided by 2 to the n minus 1, which is the same as 2 to the n minus 1 root of 69, which does coincide with our solutions that we got before. 2 to the third power minus 1, for, for example here, 2 to the second power minus 1, and so on, 2 to the fourth power minus 1 root. So this right here, Thus yield for finitely many samples where n can be any arbitrary big number, natural number at that, obviously because we only have a natural number of roots here, positive natural number, um, solution. Now, one might ask the question, obviously, if we now have a generalized um, formula for our sequence right here, what does happen if we take the limit as n approaches infinity? That might be interesting, right? What happens if we just take the n times away from here, turn this into a limit problem and just say we have infinitely many square roots applied to one another. And this is going to yield 69. Which value for x do we need here? And I can tell you that much. It's a very nice solution, at least in my opinion. It's pretty damn nice because it's 69, obviously. And because it's kind of unexpected, but if you mesh a whole lot of square roots of blah, 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 with our solution being blah, 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 into what from alpha, it's going to yield um, pretty close to 69, actually, or any other number you actually wish for. So what we are going to do is we are going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of what we got here. Obviously, 69 is independent of our limit. We can drag it to the front. So 69 times the limit as n approaches infinity of, and I'm going to rewrite this as being 69 to the 1 divided by 2 to the n minus 1. This right here is just a constant function basically that we have down here. It's just an exponential function overall. Exponential functions are continuous so we can track the limit to the um, exponent up here. If we do so, if we take the limit as n approaches infinity, we are going to get 1 over positive infinity minus 1, which is still going to yield positive infinity. So this term up here is basically 1 over positive infinity. And in the limit, this is the same as saying we are going to have 0 up here in the exponent. And what is 69 to the 0 power in the limit? Obviously, this is just going to be 1 by definition. So we are going to get in the limit 69 times 1 equal to our x. And 69 times 1 is just 69. And this right here is an absolutely beautiful relationship, if you ask me, because this just means that if we take the square root of 69 of the square root of 69 of the square root of 69 and so on, up until infinity, we are going to get 69 out. And if you mesh it into Wolfram Alpha, just like here with a bunch of square root of 69, we are approaching 69 pretty goddamn fast. It's so cool. It's a seriously cool result. And you can solve this relationship that we have right here even faster if you just say that we have this as a starting point. So the square root of x times square root of x and so on up until infinity. And this right here is going to be equal to 69. What you're going to notice is that if we just cover this part right here up, then we have the square root of x or square root of x and so on, blah, 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 infinitely many times. This right here is just once again 69, just like our original problem. So we can rewrite this as the square root of x times 69 being equal to 69. Now taking the square on both sides is going to get rid of our square root. 
Now, if we divide both sides by 69, we are going to get rid of the square root once again. A voila, x is equal to 69. This right here is the easier way, but this right here is the more formal way um, to basically prove this relationship that we can deal with the square roots like this. And in my opinion, at least I think so, there is no limit to uh, what number you can have over here. So it could be any positive free number in my opinion. I'm not certain about zero actually and negative numbers. I don't think that it works out or otherwise it's going to yield uh, complex solutions. But this can be an exercise for the viewer. Leave some comments down there below and I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And if you did, then maybe you could be interested in the contents of today's sponsor Brand, who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Back in the days when I still was at university, um, I had problems like this in homework assignments in analysis, for example. And sometimes I couldn't handle those problems because they were pretty damn abstract. But it helps a lot of times to plot sequences like those into, for example, Desmos as a graphical calculator or making use of Python, just like I did with the Euler Mascheroni constant back then. And visualizations are a huge part of mathematics and they can give you a better understanding of the problem that you have at hand right now. And this is where the contents of today's sponsor Print come in. Print is your source for some of the best online learning content out there on the internet. It really doesn't matter what you want to learn today in the STEM field, be it the mathematics that we did today, or maybe a different branch, linear algebra, or maybe you just want to learn something about computer sciences or physics. It really doesn't matter what it is you want to learn in the STEM field today. Brilliant is there and they got something up their sleeve for you. And what I love about Brilliant the most, and my students do too, is they don't just slap your abstract stuff in the face. This is not what they do. What they do is if you go over to their courses on group theory or maybe general relativity, they give you a very soft start into the topic. Just a bunch of definitions, a few historic effects and the like. And you won't even notice that you are already in the middle of the game, of the general relativity game, for example. You already learned something that you can possibly apply to the problems that they got in their courses. They start off with those soft topics and those soft introductions and just make it harder gradually. But all of those topics will be underlined with graphics and visualizations that you can play around with. It's very playful and it just helps you learn in a way more intuitive fashion. It's really hard to describe if you haven't tried it out for yourself yet. And I just invite you to try it out today by using my link at the top of the description, print.org slash maths or the QR code somewhere up here in the corner. With it, you are going to get a 30 day free trial of awesomeness. Try the whole landscape of Brain for completely free and see for yourself if their visual approaches to learning in the STEM field could be something that you could um, just take advantage of that you could use to get better at the topics that you would like to learn today. And if you feel like this could bring you further in your studies for a longer period of time, then definitely make use of the link completely and the first 200 people to do so get 20% off an annual premium subscription. It's seriously worth it. Try it out and just don't take my word for it. Try it out for yourself, 30 day free trial and see if it's something for you. And this would highly support the channel. And this concludes today's video. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. Um, yeah, that's that's basically about it. And don't forget to support the channel on Patreon if you want to see more videos. Up until the next video, I wish you guys a flammable day. See ya.